not this. Yeah, this question on page 27 of the investment appraisal documents that we've been referring to. Identify and explain the key stages of capital investment decision. We've already spoken about this last week. Identification of investment proposals, screening out the investment proposal, analyzing and evaluation, and then um, approving and monitoring the proposal. So those are the key steps. But let's come to the B aspect of the question, which is where our focus is. It's to calculate the following values for the investment proposals. One is NPV. Two, internal rate of return. We'll come to that. Three is return on capital employed or the accounting rate of return, if you remember. And then four is the discounted payback period. And we'll talk about that as well in a moment. So let's go read a question. PV Co. is evaluating an investment proposal to manufacture products W33, which has performed well in testing, sorry, in test marketing trials conducted recently by the company's research and development division. The following information relating to this investment proposal has now been prepared. Okay. So we see what we have at our disposal here. Initial investment, two million. That's good for us in that case. Selling price, you want to pay attention to what is in the bracket there. It says current price terms. So it means today. In today's terms, that is the selling price. Then it says expected selling price inflation. Okay. 3%. So since there is inflation here, it means we have to change the real cash flows into the nominal cash flows by applying the inflation per year. So we're going to start with the workings first for this one. So the workings are going to have the sales coming in. How many years do we have for this project? Four years. And so we bring in the <coughs> selling price in today's term, it's twenty dollars. So current will be zero. I want to just make it a little bit simple for us. Current is now so zero, twenty dollars. Now, the inflation here is what? 3%. 3% inflation. So what do we do? We apply 1 plus R exponent N, where N is the number of periods. So to get the inflated price, we have to multiply the 20 by 1 plus R exponent N. N is the number of periods, the period in question. R is the inflation rate. So here, it will be 1.03 exponent 1. 1.03 exponent 2. 1.03 exponent 3. 1.03 exponent 4. That is how we get the selling prices for the respective years. Alternatively, so let's, let's punch the first one for instance. So 20.6. I could just multiply that by the rate, which is 1.03, to get the next one. That's 21.22. Multiply it again by 1.03. That's 21.85. You want to work to two decimal places here. Then multiply it again by 1.03. And that is 22.51. So that's how we get the inflated price. Alternatively, like I said, if you are going to do exponent 1, exponent 2, exponent 3, exponent 4, then you have to multiply it by the original, which is the 20. So these are the two ways we can arrive at our answer calculation. So if we do 20 times 1.03 exponent 3 for the third year, 
uh oh, exponent 3, you are getting 21.85. The same answer. So either you are taking the exponent thing and multiply it by the original. Please, if you are working in the exponent, don't multiply it by the prior year issue. Otherwise, the answer will be wrong. If you are taking the exponent, then it should be on the original. But if you are just multiply it by the uh, factor, the 1 plus r, then you multiply it by the previous year to get the subsequent year figure. Then we bring in the demand, which has been given to us to be 60,000, 70,000, 120,000, and whatever the heck. So you want to tell the examiner you want to work thousands in units. So 60, 70. To avoid having a lot of figures at the end, you want to keep it simple by working in thousands if we have the figures in a million. But if you are comfortable to work in the million or in the whole figures given to you like that, nobody cares. It's your swag. You will still be right. So we multiply up, and that is what gives us the sales revenue, which will go to our NPV shadow. So that will be in dollars, thousand. So one, two, three, six, one, four, eight, five, two, six, two, two, one, zero, one, three. So that's our sales figure. Then we go to the next item. Variable operating costs. Again, they said current price. So variable operating cost. Then it says expected operating cost inflation is 4%. So it means the variable operating cost also, we have to work on it to get it inflated for our final answer. So work into variable operating cost. So, I want to just bring in my year here because we're going to just work in the same mindset in the context of this question. So, in current terms, it's $8. So, variable cost per unit, $8. The inflation is 4%. So, this time around, it's going to be 1 plus 0, 4. Sorry, 0, 4 exponent n so technically that becomes 1.04 exponent n applying the same concept so what do we have so exponent 1 is giving me an amount of 8.32 for year 1 times 1.04 8.65 times 1.04 8.99 Sort of 9.0 or something like that. I don't know. I'm tempted to just make it 9.0 because of the nature of the figure. Yeah, we can do the 8 like that. 9.0 and go away. Then times 1.04. 9.36. So these are the variable costs, respectively. Then we bring in the demand, as we have here. And multiply up respectively to give us the variable cost or variable operating cost. And that is in dollars, three zeros up. 199.2 for what? So 499.2, 606, 1080, 421. So because we are working to the nearest thousand, like... We ignore those decimals we see, but the points two and points whatever the heck. And so that is our variable operating cost. Then let's see what else we have. It says fixed operating cost. Now, usually you know that general fixed costs are irrelevant costs. You know this from the marginal costing principle from relevant cost analysis. So, general face cost, absorbed face costs are irrelevant. But specific face costs are relevant. 
Now, as the information, if you read here, they said the information relating to this investment proposal has now been prepared. So it means the fixed cost we see here will be a specific fixed cost. So what do we have? 170000 every year. Remember, again, you've got to be careful because it says expected operating cost inflation. You realize that when it comes to the inflation, it didn't say fixed or variable. It just said expected operating cost inflation. What does that mean? It means this expected operating cost will affect both the fixed cost and the variable cost. Grammar, context, attention. So that expected operating cost inflation rate will affect both the fixed cost and the variable cost. So we bring that up respectively. That'll be work in three. So fixed operating cost. Still going to work with the year situation. So currently, in current terms, they said 170. Again, we work in three zeros. So we have to remember that. So we're going to have 170 here. Inflation of 4%. So 1.04 we get for year one. And I'm getting whatever, 177 approximately. Uh, 184 approximately. 191 approximately. 199. It's like 200,000 almost. But we can put the two together, so we will add the variable operating cost, which we worked for in workings three, so that we'll get a total operating cost, which will go to the NPV schedule, okay, which will go to the MPV schedule. Now, you can bring them as individual items, though, but, you know, so I can add the variable cost, right? so that I can get a total operating cost that will go as a line item on my MPV schedule. So 177 plus 499, that is 676. 184 plus 606, that is 790. 191 plus 1080, that's 1271. Then 199 plus 421, that's 620. The Research and Development Division has prepared the following demand forecast for the results of product, whatever the heck. So let's go. It is expected that all units produced will be sold in line with the company's policy of keeping inventories of, of keeping no inventory of finished goods. No terminal value or scrap value is expected at the end of the four years. Oh, so there is no scrap value here. When production of product WW3 is planned to end, for investment appraisal purposes, PV Co uses nominal or money discount rate of 10% per annum. So there is inflation in the question. We are giving nominal cost of capital. So, boom, we go for it and do the calculation. And then the target rosy is 30%. Why did the examiner give you that? Because of the III part. If you remember, we said we will compare the uh, ROSI or the uh, accounting rate of return that we will calculate to the target of the company. If what we calculate is higher, we accept the project. If we, what we calculate is lower, we reject the project. So that one will come later on if you are doing the II part of the III part of the question. But for now, we're done. There is no scrap value. There is no tax. So we won't do capital allowance. We are just done. Such a simple question. So we pull up our NPV schedule. Um, what the heck is the name of our company again? PV Co. It's important you do that. <laughs> Net present value schedule. So let me copy the years. I have to extend it a little bit. So there we go. <coughs> So we slash in our current sign, working three zeros up. What do we bring? We bring our sales from workings one. These are the sales respectively. Paste. That's it. I think it makes sense. Got to just adjust them a little bit. 
then we less the operating expenses or the operating cost. So operating cost from workings three, the last one, these figures, paste, and we are lessing them so we can get a net operating cash flows. So what do we have? Have 620, so 1013 will be 393 for the last one. 1351695560. Okay. So this is our net operating cash flows. There is no tax, so no cost for alarm here. We'll just go in and bring in the other issues like the initial cost, which we are told is two million. So that's going to be 2,000 outflow. There's no scrap value. There's no working capital. There's nothing. So we're done. Okay, so that's going to be our net cash flows. Now, this is net operating cash flows. This is net cash flow. Then we'll bring in the discount factor. What is the rate we are given? 10%. No P. So year zero is 1.00. 0 0.909, 0 0.826, 0 0.751, and 0 0.8, sorry, 0 0.68 something something. I think we used it somewhere here. Let's see if I can just go pick it up from here for year four. 10%, 0 0.683, 68. Okay, so I have the three. So we multiply up. So we can get our present value here. So present value, the year one, or oh, this is 2,000 negative, 509, okay, 574, maybe 1015 approximately, 268. So that is the idea about that. But we now have to add all of them together to get a net present value. So 2,000, 509, 574, 1015, 268. And that is positive $366,000. Again, context of the question is very important here because the I aspect of the question says we should do calculation. Or the B aspect of the question, not even B, I, we are doing calculation. Then the C part said, discuss your finding in section B above and advise whether the project or the investment proposal is financially acceptable. So that would be the C aspect of the question. So here, you don't write your English after the calculation. You write your English because it's a requirement separately on its own. So I, which is the net present value, the question is saying, is the project financially viable? It's just the same, sorry, financially acceptable. Is it is the same as should they proceed or not? So what are we getting? We're getting positive MPV, 366,000. So it makes sense. They can proceed with the projects. So the net present value, again, I want to use NPV in my explanation. So I want to tell the examiner that. So the net PV of the project is positive 366,000 and hence financially acceptable. I want to just keep it simple, sweet, straight to the point here. Again, context of the question. The previous question we solved, the two were in one. And so after the calculation, your explanation will follow. But in this question, it's been separated. So you have to answer it as well in that particular context. But that is the net present value.